Ever wonder why some games just grab you by the brain and don't let go? It's not just about fancy graphics or epic explosions, even if you are in Unreal Engine 5. It's about something far more insidious. I'm talking about game design psychology. And no, I'm not talking about mind control, I'm talking about making a game so good that players forget to eat, sleep, and why they're fighting the same boss for the 50th time. Today we're diving into the secret sauce behind true player engagement. I got 10 fascinating brain-bending tips that's going to transform your game development. Whether you're a seasoned Unreal 5 wizard, Gryffindor! or just starting out, stick around, saving the most powerful secrets to last. First, let's talk about making your game understandable. Think of your UI like a helpful, non-judgmental friend. You don't want it yelling instructions, or worse, hiding the jump button in some sub-menu labeled Advanced Aerodynamics. Good UI means players don't even notice the interface because it's so seamless and intuitive. It's like a ninja, silent, effective, and you only realize it's there when it's gone. Or if it's really, really bad. Good UI means that players don't even notice the interface because it's so seamless and intuitive. In Unreal Engine 5, this means carefully crafting your HUD, menus, and on-screen prompts. Use clear icons, consistent layouts, and use visual and audio cues to let the player know that something has happened. Think about a simple health bar or an objective marker that tells you everything you need to know without a single word. Or how a subtle chime can let you know that you've found a secret area like in Hollow Knight or in Zelda. When players aren't fighting the interface, they're fighting your game, which is exactly what you want. Next, let's talk about the bad guys. Nobody wants to fight a cardboard cutout, unless it has a compelling backstory and a really effective paper cut attack. But after five days of agonizing pain, the Cobra died. Engaging enemies are not just bullet sponges. They're integral to the challenge and even part of the story. They have unique behaviors, clear visual cues, and what we call telegraphs, and a sense of hierarchy. You should know who the big bad is, not who's just cannon fodder. In Unreal Engine 5, you can use animation blueprints and AI behavior trees to give your enemies distinct attack patterns and reactions. Think about unique silhouettes and sound design for every different type of enemy. Consider the Dark Souls series. Every enemy has a predictable pattern that you can learn, make death feel like a lesson, not a punishment, or Halo, where the confident elites contrast the panicking grunts, instantly telling you who the real threat is. Game world isn't just a pretty backdrop for your player to run around in. It's a silent narrator, silently whispering tales of triumph and tragedy throughout your game world. Or at least it should be, or else it's just a bunch of pretty pixels. Environmental storytelling is a powerful technique where the game world itself conveys a narrative story. You can show history and atmosphere through visual and audio cues, crumbling buildings, overgrown vegetation, abandoned objects. Even lighting can tell a story without muttering a single word. Unreal Engine's powerful rendering and lighting tools are perfect for this. Use volumetric fog, dynamic lighting, and detailed asset placement to hint at past events or guide players' attention. Look at Last of Us. Really great visual storytelling. There's decaying buildings, there's vegetation overgrown. It looks like that's a world been reclaimed by nature. Or Horizon Zero Dawn, where the game made the player ask more questions the more they explored the world. It created this intrigue where it's like, I wonder what's in there. I wonder how it ties together to the story. It created this intrigue and it made players want to finish the game. It's about letting players discover the narrative, not just be told it. Now, this might sound counterintuitive, but sometimes less is more. Ever heard the saying, necessity is the mother of invention? It's more like lack of budget is the mother of brilliant, unexpected gameplay mechanics. Constraints, whether tactical limitations or self-imposed design rules, can be a powerful catalyst for innovation. They compel both developers and players to think creatively, leading to unique mechanics and memorable experiences. Even with Unreal Engine 5's immense power, setting deliberate constraints like a limited color palette for a specific mood or a unique movement mechanic can push creativity. Remember Silent Hill? Its iconic fog wasn't just spooky. It was a clever way to hide limited draw distances on older hardware, turning a tactical limitation into one of its greatest features. Or Space Invaders when enemies sped up when they were destroyed because there was a little bit more processing power. It's about turning perceived weaknesses into unique strengths. Speaking of things you don't want to lose, the next one taps into a very primal fear. Imagine finding a hundred bucks. Pretty cool, right? Now imagine losing the hundred bucks. Now oh, that's got to sting a little bit. Your brain is weird and game designers know it. This is loss aversion. The pain of losing something is felt more intensely than the pleasure of gaining the equivalent item. Probably why I don't like Tarkov. I lose my stuff all the time. The cognitive bias can create tension and drive engagement by motivating players to avoid negative outcomes or protect existing assets. In Unreal Engine 5, you can implement this through mechanics like permadeath, resource scarcity, or even the threat of losing hard-earned XP. Think about how you frame choices, life saved versus deaths avoided. The weighted companion cube in Portal is a classic example. 
Players often develop an emotional attachment, making its eventual loss surprisingly impactful. Or the dread level draining in old Dungeons & Dragons games, players would rather die than lose XP. It's a powerful tool. But what if we can make players play games not out of fear, but out of pure unadulterated anticipation? Your brain loves a good surprise, and with a good surprise comes a good hit of the happy chemical dopamine. It's like a slot machine, but instead of losing your life savings, you just lose track of time. Dopamine loops are the core of game engagement. If you complete a challenge, you get a reward, and you're motivated to seek the next challenge. Back to the slot machine, using the same sort of idea to create a dopamine hit, when you win, lights, bells, and flashing lights help reinforce that dopamine hit, so that you keep spinning that slot wheel because you might just win again. Games are the same way, and now that we've gotten rid of the RNG loot boxes, they're way better. There's also variable rewards. When you don't know when or what you're gonna get, it's gonna keep you hooked. In Unreal Engine 5, you can design loot tables, daily quests, and a progression system to leverage this. Think about random drops from enemies or timed events. This is a live service game's bread and butter, with their daily challenges, battle pass, and loot boxes constantly offering unpredictable, tempting rewards. That fear of missing out is a powerful motivator. Just remember, aim for compelling, not manipulative like some AAA companies do. Nobody likes being a puppet. Unless that puppet has a sword and a compelling backstory, but still, you would want to be the one pulling the strings. Player agency is that feeling that your actions are truly impacting the game world, the story, or the character. It taps into that fundamental psychological need for autonomy and competence. It's the feeling of being in control and effective. Unreal Engine 5 allows for complex branching narratives, dynamic systems, and robust character customization. Give players choices that have tangible consequences, even if it's subtle. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is famous for its complex narratives where player choice led to vastly different endings. Or Life is Strange, where every decision ripples through the story, creating a profounding emotional resonance. When players feel their actions matter, they become deeply invested. What choices do your players even want? Well, you need to understand who they are. Not everyone's gonna be the ultimate warrior. Some people just wanna collect digital hats. And I mean, that's fine. We're not here to judge. Unless your hat looks really dumb. Richard Bartel's player types, socializers, explorers, achievers, and killers categorize players by their core motivations. Socializers want to connect and cooperate, explorers crave discovery, achievers are driven by rewards and milestones, and killers seek dominance and victory. When designing an Unreal Engine 5, consider adding features that might appeal to multiple types. Co-op modes for socializers, hidden secrets for explorers, robust achievement systems for achievers, and PvP arenas for killers. World of Warcraft caters to socializers with guilds, Minecraft to explorers with endless worlds, Little Nightmares 2 to achievers with its collectible hats, and Super Smash Bros. to killers in competitive matches. By understanding these archetypes, you can design a better game that appeals to a broader audience and has a longer lasting engagement. There's a reason some of these games are still relevant even a decade after they've been released. You know when you sit down to play for five minutes and then all of a sudden the sun's up and you forgot what your actual name is? That's flow state. That's where the game's difficulty perfectly matches the player's skill. Not too easy, not too hard, but just right. Makes you feel like you're in control. In Unreal Engine 5, this means carefully tuning your difficulty curve, providing clear goals, and giving immediate, consistent feedback. Dynamic scaling can even help keep your players in that Goldilocks zone. Tetris is a classic example. Constantly challenging you at your skill level, or the fluid web swinging in Marvel's Spider-Man where traversal itself can put you in the zone. When players are in the flow, they're not just playing the game, they're living it. And finally, the pinnacle. If players aren't crying at the end of your game, did you even make a game? Creating emotional connection means players truly, genuinely care about your game and your characters. It's about crafting complex characters with nuanced motivations, meaningful interactions, and narratives that tap into the universal human emotions like love, loss, or redemption. Unreal Engine 5's cinematic tools, character animation systems, and robust dialogue tools are perfect for crafting emotional, resonant moments, focused on nuanced character motivations, and impactful story arcs. The Last of Us is a masterclass in emotional storytelling, forging a deep bond between Joel and Ellie, or God of War which combines epic action with Kratos' journey of pain and redemption. When players feel, they remember, and when they remember, they talk about your game and they want to keep coming back for more. If you want to keep flexing that brain, I got a video up there that'll tell you 10 mistakes that you're probably making in Unreal Engine 5. But if you're looking for a tutorial, I got another video down there that'll show you guys about data assets and setting up data assets for your weapons. Special thanks to my coffee members. If you want to support what I do and get access to some awesome perks, consider becoming a coffee member today. Otherwise, keep learning until you game over. Peace.